Hello and welcome to France, where today we are getting our first taste of the model year 2024 Citroen C5 Aircross. And yeah, this is it. It's been revamped with new hybrid technology. It gets 48 volt stuff and it's got a few other tweaks elsewhere. So we're going to hit the roads on the countryside that surrounds Paris to see how it drives. But before we do that, let's take a closer look at the design because one of the reasons buyers are drawn to Citroëns, I think anyway, is because of the way they look. They go down a slightly different path and this is no different to its siblings. It's quirkier and it's quite French in its design. Firstly, up front here, we've got a carry-on of this sleek LED-based design on the headlights. It's just chunky and it's very Citroën. But then if you follow me around to the side, well, then it gets extra Citroën because you've got these chunky bits of plastic down here. They're not quite as big as the ones you used to get on Citroen's hatchback models, but they're there and they do work in protecting the bodywork from those doors in car parks. And we've all suffered those, haven't we? Now on the side here, you can see we've got chunky wheels, quite a bit of tire as well, which bodes well for the ride. And then at the back of the car here, if you follow this quite nice design where it's a two-tone finish on this one here, you can see we've got these still quite chunky rear lights and just an honest rear end, again, the plastic bits poke out more than the bodywork bits with paint on them. So that bodes well for practicality. It's very Citroen, it's very quirky, and I actually really like it. Compared to all the Germanic stuff in this class, it looks different enough, doesn't it? As for what powers the car, adding a 48 volt hybrid system to the 1.2 litre petrol C5 Aircross base has benefits for both fuel economy and smoothness. Citroen even claims that the hybrid Aircross can manage as much as 50% of urban driving in electric mode, although the brand doesn't quote a maximum range like it does for the more heavily electrified plug-in hybrid car which sits above it. Think of this self-charging hybrid Aircross then as a halfway house between the pure petrol C5 and the plug-in car, or a first step towards electric for families that have previously only known petrol or diesel. The standard these days is such high level when you've got models like the Volkswagen Tiguan, which have really, really good hybrid technology, well, this car has its work cut out, but initial impressions suggest that actually it's very seamless. The transition from petrol to electric or in both directions actually is really smooth indeed. And I've got the car set to eco mode, and there's a good reason for that, I'll explain it in a moment. And I can see that not only am I using a minuscule amount of power, unless I really gun it, I'm also charging when I come off the accelerator. So there's a bit of energy going back into the battery, just ensuring that at all points, you will always have assistance from the electric. Now I mentioned that eco mode is the setting I've put it in. And that's because this car doesn't feel at all sporty. Citroen isn't trying to make it sporty. And I'm very happy about that because that's for other brands to worry about. The Seat Ateca, for example, does try to promise a slightly more sporty experience. This C5 Aircross though, it feels pretty happy with being the comfortable car. It's relaxing to drive. The engine, well, I can hear it and it is a little bit gruff at points, but it's very distant and it doesn't at all feel intrusive in the cabin. Also, all the control weighting is really light. Accelerator, brakes, steering, it's all super soft. And the seats, they are also very comfortable. Citroen has actually bragged about how comfortable their seats are. And well, climbing into it, it did feel like I was climbing into an armchair. You sit relatively high in the car. The view over the bonnet is commanding. I can still see the bonnet line ahead of me which SUV buyers are probably gonna like because they like that muscular feeling. But yet the seat is nice and cushioned, both on my back, on my backside, and also on my lower legs as well. It's just a nice place to sit. The car is big as well. In fact, it's one of the biggest in the class, and that does give it a lot of room when the interior is concerned. But it doesn't feel too big on the roads. These are quite narrow French village roads, and yet it's very easy to place the car. The door mirrors are very chunky. They're almost van-like. There's good visibility out the back, and because the boot of this car is relatively vertical, it means I can position the car even when reversing nice and easily. You do get a reversing cameras, parking sensors, and all the stuff you'd expect. Admittedly, the camera isn't the sharpest. The graphics do look a bit low resolution for 2023, but it's perfectly fine, and you can definitely position the car with them very well. I'm going to take it out of eco now, which just makes the car feel quite soft and sluggish and responsive. Put it back into normal. We're going to come to a stop here so I can test the acceleration. Smooth, picks up all right. The volume of the engine does raise a bit under power, but because it's got that nice gruff note, that three cylinder growl, it does sound okay. 
Now I've got it in sport mode just to see how that affects everything. And I have to say, it doesn't feel like it's changed the accelerator that much. Normally when you flick through modes in a car, the accelerator, the reaction to the accelerator is what changes the most. But in this, it just seems to hang on to its automatic six gears for a bit longer as you'd expect. So it just means the engine, I guess, is in a better position to give you more acceleration. But because of the hybrid technology, you don't necessarily need it. The pickup is pretty quick, at least the reactions are, although it never feels that quick. As for the ride, well, when I got in the car, I fully expected it to be by far the most cushioned car in the class because Citroen's really banging on about going back to what it's good at, which is, well, quirky design. I think we can all agree that's the thing. It does well, but also real comfort. And I said the seats are great. And yes, the ride definitely feels cushioned over bigger bumps, over some speed humps. It did a really good job of smoothing out especially the return to the flat surface. It didn't sort of fall off the edge of some of the speed humps, which in France, by the way, can be quite angular. But over some other bumps, some smaller undulations and some cracks in the road, there is a bit of a jiggle through the car. It doesn't quite make them disappear like I was hoping. So here's a good example here. That was a paved zebra crossing and I could certainly feel that we were going over it. It wasn't a complete cloud-like experience. I think that's probably just because this thing is big, it's heavy, it's got chunky wheels, they're not the biggest alloy wheels, so there is some tyre, but it's still a large vehicle. And that heft influences the car's handling as well. While there's plenty of grip and the C5 Aircross is far from roly-poly in the bends, it's also pretty numb, with nothing in the way of steering feel. Now we're on a bit more of a highway, I can start to think about the road noise. Now I have to say, the wind noise is really low. I'm not noticing anything really substantial outside the car, but there is a slight hiss of tyre noise in the background. But really, you do feel insulated in this car, and that goes well with the way this interior makes you feel when you get in. So I'm going to pull over and I'll show you the details of the cabin. Now, it must be said that this car does come packed with a lot of equipment. Firstly, we've got those driver assistance features, which I mentioned on the road. There's certainly a lot of stuff to help make driving much easier. And you've got two digital instrument screens here. So you've got your infotainment screen and then an instrument cluster ahead of you. So at a glance, this thing feels really high tech. Also, we've got in this car a panoramic sunroof as well, so it can open up all the way back as well. So it's good and it feels like you've got a lot of equipment. But it has to be said that some parts of the interior don't feel the highest quality. While what you touch, the steering wheel and what you rest your arms on, they're nice and soft and actually very comfortable, goes with these brilliantly comfortable seats. But if you reach a bit further down, there are some scratchier plastics. It's not the highest of quality finishes. And even on the top surface here, while it's okay, it doesn't feel particularly premium. That said, the system in front of me here, the infotainment screen, is nice to use, it's reactive, the sat-nav is fairly intuitive, although we haven't managed to get it into English mode yet, it's been running in French, but thankfully my GCSE French is just about okay that I knew what I was doing. But it's definitely not the best. The screen itself as well is set in this slab of plastic here, which looks quite wide, but you realise actually quite a lot of the screen can't stretch into most of that plastic, so you've got a fairly narrow window here for that. But it's okay, it's still an acceptable system and you've got some shortcut buttons down here which are very, very useful. As for the instrument cluster ahead of you though, again, lots of information. The graphics are unique, they're very Citroen and I like that it feels different to the rivals but in some areas it does feel a little bit behind. Namely where the um, actual sat-nav can be displayed on the screen ahead of you. You can have it either in a smaller part of it or on a full display, but both versions aren't the most high resolution. If you're used to the sharp graphics of an Audi or a Volkswagen, well, it might not look bang up to date. That being said, we do know that buyers have long liked the practicality of the C5 Aircross, so let's have a look in the back of the car to see if this version still offers what people want, space. Now in the back here, not only do we have a decent amount of room, I've got some good space for my knees and my feet can fit comfortably under the seat ahead of me, but we've also got three seats here that can be moved individually. So this seat, for example, can slide forward on its own, so can the middle seat and so can the seat closest to you right now, which is gonna be really good for families, especially if you find yourself throwing random objects into the boot or if you've got three kids that all have different size legs. You've got good vents down here as well. You've got two adjustable vents here and you've got a USB port down there, but otherwise it's pretty basic in here. Although having this full length panoramic sunroof does make it feel nice and airy. In terms of headroom, I've got a good enough amount of headroom to the left of me, but a really, really good amount of headroom above me. Or certainly actually if I lean over here, it's gonna be fine for kids in here. And even for adults, I'm under six foot, just. 
I can fit comfortably in here. That's definitely true for the middle seat as well. You can get your feet either side of this block here and I'm comfortable. The seat itself doesn't feel any narrower than the ones either side of it. As for the boot of the car, it's always been a strong point for the C5 Aircross. And as you can see, we've loaded all of our camera equipment in here and our stay over bags and it swallowed them with no problems. In fact, there's loads of room above it. If we remove this parcel shelf, there's good room up here. And because this boot is close to vertical, it means that you can actually load it and stack things up on top of each other, which is very practical indeed. But there's also more space hidden on the boot floor. So if I remove all of this stuff, and there's actually quite a lot of space under here. In fact, you can take the whole floor out if you so want to, and it clears up a really big amount of space down here. Now, there's clearly a place where you can mount a spare tire, but this car doesn't have that. It will have a tire repair kit like everything does these days. But you've got all of this extra space under the boot floor and a few little cubby holes down here as well. It's a practical boot, and I've noticed a 12 volt plug as well if you want to power stuff out from the boot. And this also can be put on a couple of different levels. So you can have it here or you can raise it up here if you wanted to. But otherwise, just a really practical boot, very spacious. Now, if I fold down the rear seats, which I'm going to do now, as you can see, there is plenty of space in here. You've got that flat floor over there with the flat loading lip. And then this is close enough to flat. It's a bit angular but it is very spacious indeed. You can use all of this room here to load up. So trips down to the furniture store shouldn't be a problem. All right, so that's the Citroen C5 Aircross driven quite briefly in France. And yes, I do like quite a lot about it. I still think the design is really good. I like the fact that it's different and it's attempting to be different from its rivals. And I also like the quirkiness of the interior. The seats are brilliantly comfortable. As soon as you get in, you feel like you're driving a Citroen. But I must say, I was hoping for more when it came to the ride. It doesn't quite smother out the bumps as I was hoping. Although it must be said, it's still one of the most comfortable cars in this class. It's just not quite on the level I hoped a Citroen would be. Also the technology as well, it's got plenty of kit on it, you're not short of stuff, but when it comes to the sheen and the, the polish of the digital stuff, I think it's not quite there versus some of its main rivals. But that won't necessarily matter for this car because a lot of Citroen buyers have long loved the quirkiness and fun of this brand and definitely you can feel that in this model. Yes, some of the materials in the cabin a bit lower down don't feel the highest in premiumness, but overall you do enjoy being behind the wheel of this car. It feels properly Citroen and properly French. And I quite like French cars and I love French coffee. So I'm definitely gonna be enjoying some of that while I digest more thoughts of this car. But let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Do you think this is better than its rivals? That Kia Sportage is a hot seller and the Tiguan from Volkswagen is always very popular in Britain. Also, if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to click the like button and of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. For now, it's au revoir from us.